Hey everyone, Positron taking a look at Monster Train. This is a roguelike deck builder uh, based around the concept of driving a train to hell, basically. Uh, it's got a lot of similarities to Slay the Spire. In fact, uh, if you own Slay the Spire, it's got a discount right now on Steam, 10% uh, off. It's only on Steam right now, as far as I know. Um, Good Shepherd Entertainment was kind enough to provide me a code that was developed by shiny shoe i believe is their name and they worked on uh, full throttle remaster which was pretty good so uh yeah i'm gonna get right into this it does have a multiplayer mode i won't be showing that off right now but uh, i believe it has a multiplayer mode for up to like seven people at once which is kind of wild uh, you basically do a race of sorts um i'm actually going to abandon my current run as much as that pains me and i'll get into it so you can actually uh pause and resume which is really nice you can just exit the game come back at any point It'll save your progress. So the way this game works, it's, I would say both a little, both basic and very complicated. Um, so yeah, we can choose our primary clan and the primary clan will determine what our hero is. Uh, I'll probably go with the Awoken since I know them the most and I just unlocked the Stygian Guard. So I think I will use them as another one. Um, so there is also Covenants. Covenants are, I mean, it's literally Ascension from Slay the Spire. Um, there are different effects at each level and things get stronger. So we'll just play at regular Covenant 1. Um, Covenant 1 is kind of, I guess, the default, basically. And we will depart and we can start seeing how this plays. Yes, yeah, so the story is we have the last pyre which we're carrying on our train to kind of reignite the flames of hell. Heaven has come down and an ice to place over and we're trying to get it back run again. Again, why it's called Monster Train and not like Hell Train or something, I really don't know. Oh, uh, let's see, so these are random starting cards. Interesting, a couple of these I've not actually used. I'm actually gonna turn this up ever so slightly here. Cause it's got some good music, we'll, we'll tweak that as we go. Uh, yeah, so right at the start we can, we always get a chance to upgrade our champion. Alright, maybe that was a little too loud. Um, yeah, we can upgrade our champion and we can choose an artifact. So let's see, we can either take revenge. Um, so the the basic, the, the sentient of this clan, which is the Awoken, uh, they're all kind of plant-based. Uh, this one doesn't start with any attack by default. I do like the spikes version, so I'm going to go with that. And we get an artifact. Artifacts are always active. So we can deal two damage whenever an enemy unit moves between floors. You'll see what that means shortly. Uh, I think I will actually take that. Alright, let's get into our first battle and I'll start to explain the mechanics of the game. Uh, I'm not going to play with the bonus, so you can actually turn this on and off and get some bonus effects. And uh, this is our boss for this area. So everywhere has, you know, some, some minions and some bosses. Bosses typically will go into a mode where they fight until, you know, someone dies. So the way this game works is that there are four floors of your train. There is your pyre. This is basically your health pool. It can attack, um, but I don't believe you can cast spells on it. Actually, does it say? Yeah, immune to most spells and effects. Um, and then we've got three floors. Every turn, enemies will move up a floor towards the pyre. Uh, so let's see. I think we've always got two slots, potentially. I don't know if you can ever do more than um, two. I've never tried it. Might be able to, though. And we can cast units into this area. Which I will do. Um, do I want to put a train steward here? I might want to put one up a floor, too. Now yeah, we'll go on the bottom floor for now, and I'm going to buff our champion. You always start the game with the champion in hand, so. Uh, yeah, we'll do six damage to that guy. And once we have nothing left to play, and we have no embers left, which is basically our energy, uh, we will end our turn. And the way combat plays out, enemies always get to attack first. In this case, we have spikes. So they take damage for hitting us. 
So here's a special event that happens sometimes. The collector will come in. If you can kill it before it leaves, then you get the gold. Um, so we can actually just throw an enemy or a, a unit up here. Make sure that that'll happen. It's the Helical Crystals will deal 50 damage. Yeah, we'll do that. Very expensive to cast. So we got 50 gold. Gold is used to buy upgrades and things along the way. Descend a unit and restore 10 health. Interesting. So we can move this unit down, for example. I think we will put another unit up here. So you can see the capacity. Um, these units take up two capacity. You have a total of five at the start. You can increase this with special upgrades and things like that. And I'll throw a unit here. Um, unless a card says consume, it'll just get thrown into your discard pile. So there's really no reason not to spend um, your embers. Uh, embers are reset to zero at the start of a return and then you gain some. Unless you have a special artifact. There is like a, what was it, the ice cream cone in Slay the Spire? All right, so when we're on the final wave, as it says, this guy's relentless. Combat in this room continues until all enemies are defeated and they can't be rooted. So he will just attack and attack and attack until uh, either he dies or I die. Uh, we'll throw a regen on here. And I think, so we can see the preview too. So we said we're gonna lose 27 health throughout this and they're both gonna die, which I mean, I think that means that we're gonna actually survive. They're not even gonna get a chance to move up. There's also different speeds. We can really crank it up if we want. I usually play on fast. I feel that's a good speed. Now by usually, I mean, I've played this maybe an hour. I've done two full runs. I, I actually won my second one. Um, so we can choose cards here. We can get consumer and apply this regen. Uh, we can enhance with uh, four attack and apply four spikes. Actually, I like that. Or another Steel Enhancer. Hmm. Steel Enhancer is also just a good card. I'm going to get Wildwood Sap because there's a few cards that synergize with that. So these are cards from the Stygian Guard. Offering. Discard before the end of your turn will instead be played. Huh. The 60 damage to front enemy unit and push it back. Just deal 25 damage, but discard a card at random, so this could definitely combo. Spell weakness. Uh, I don't think I really want to mess with that. Crypt Builder could be good. We'll get Titan's Gratitude, and then we'll see if about picking up more discard cards. So when you finish an area, uh, you come down to a new section, you're given a choice. You can take a path. So we could go left to the Merchant of Magic and some free gold, or we can go right to the Merchant of Steel and a Stygian unit. I'm actually going to go to the Merchant. In fact, let's actually recruit before we do that. So we could get this. This one, Sweep, attacks all enemies. Usually, uh, you only attack the front. Frostbite 3. Take damage at the end of the turn. Or one with Encant when um, we cast a spell. They gain Rage, which is a temporary attack power. Hmm. This is kind of a tough choice. I think I'll actually take this one, because we can probably upgrade some things with that. Uh, with that, let's see. So I think we'll... I'll create a unit with quick to make them attack first. Um, you know what? Maybe we won't buy that. Maybe we'll upgrade this. And we'll give you the encant armor. I think we'll actually save the rest. There's a, a few things that you can use gold for, so. Alright. Disciple conduits. Mark and vision. At the start of the battle, enemy units appear on each floor. Uh, sure, let's try this one. So this is actually going to be pretty dangerous. Our Pyro will potentially take a lot of damage here. I like that it tells you what uh, track is playing at the start of each as well. All right.
Alright, so we're gonna do this as always. Um, and I will probably... Hmm, tough call actually, I might... I don't think they're gonna... Oh no, they'll live. And we should put an enemy up here, or a unit up here. Now they're gonna be in trouble. But I think it's worthwhile to sacrifice a single unit just to save a little bit of damage. There's that frostbite. And they're gonna kill themselves on the spikes. Oh, that's right! They also take two damage from the uh, our artifacts. So I could have actually held off on that. Let's see. How do we want to deal with this? I'd like to protect this unit a bit, so we'll we'll buff them up a bit. Might throw a train steward here just to kind of sacrifice. We could also just drop one of these guys. So we get the gold bonus there. Definitely need um, some more regen. So this is, sometimes you get the, the brief respite is just a, kind of a free turn. I think, I don't know if that happens when you just destroy all enemies or if it's a time thing. I mean, typically too, a lot of things only happen on the floor that they're cast on. So I think if you do, I think for the enchant, it would only happen, let's actually try it. If I cast a spell here, yeah, it won't trigger this. I think that was still a valid spellcast, even though it had no uh, no target. So what we could actually do here is we could do 50 damage if we get rid of this enemy first. So we're gonna try that. Our champion is certainly in a lot of trouble here. So what happens is that, uh, yeah, so when a floor is destroyed by the boss, they freeze it, um, and you get another turn, essentially. Hmm, how do we want to handle this? I guess we'll do this and try to hold them off a little bit. Oh, that frostbite does stack up quite a bit. All right, we can cast uh, Helical Chrysalis again and finish him off. Now, if he did get to the pyre, he would be able to damage our pyre, but we would also uh, probably win if he was weak enough. Let's see, Restoration Detonation, Razor Sharp Edge, or Steel Enhancer. I like Restoration Detonation. Flash Freeze. Well, there's that Crypt Builder. But I kind of like the Frostbite. And we move on to another area. So hopefully this is starting to give you the, the idea of the flow here. Now, stuff that's in the center we can do on either side. So we could get uh, upgraded spells and Pyre Health. Or we can get a unit and an artifact. I think we'll go for the unit and the artifact because uh, I don't really need the Pyre Health. Even though I would like to upgrade spells. Conf Consume is playing, deal 30 damage to the front enemy unit. Units gain an extra upgrade slot. That's also pretty good. Hmm, these are both pretty good. How many Consume cards do we have? I think we only got one right now. So is that Nameless Siren again, or Guard of the Unnamed? That's what I meant to look at, too. Um, oh yeah, Frozen Lances are a spell. I know um, the other units get like something called Torch, I think it is. Let's go with the Guard. So this is a random event. We'll have some choices here. 
As we pass by and we come upon... As you pass the train graveyard and notice several of your fallen allies. Then the beast of gnarled steel line now extinguished pyre shards. Even further inside the rubble, you can make out some of the last protected treasures. Perhaps if you relight the pyre shards using some of your own, the trains would reveal their value. Which of the trains pyre shards do you relight? Um, so we get Hearthstone, Blood for Blood, or Heartless cannot be healed. I don't like that. I think we'll go for the Medium Shard, actually. So every time our Pyre kills an enemy, it will heal. So that's basically a good way to kind of protect it. Maybe we'll do one or two more levels. This is a pretty good, good level. This is a good boss. Yeah, so on the actual, on the on the boss level, so these are just more than the regular mini bosses. On the boss levels, uh, they will appear and they'll be able to change floors at, at will. And we can only damage them either once, you know, we're at the end of the, all the turns or... Um, when we've destroyed everything on the floor. So let's see. I think, again, we want to throw that down there. The real question now will be... What else do we do? Uh, I think we need... Well... Maybe we throw you down here. This is a highly defensive unit. We'll throw it up there. So let's see, I think we will regen and then we'll do a Titan's Gratitude there. Alright, so that had nothing to hit, so we were fine there. And they do have a healer in the group. But fortunately for us, it's only got one health. Now the damage shield is a bummer because that will absorb a hit, and there's really nothing we can do about that. Uh, we could get rid of this enemy, though. I don't think we're going to be able to get through to kill that bomb, though, so it's going to do some pretty hefty damage to us. Yeah. But we get some Frostbite on the boss, which is nice. Now, we would like to heal, if possible. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And... The question is, can I flash freeze him? I can. Not a bad idea, honestly. And armor just gets taken before health, essentially. And I think I will actually heal you as well. Bombs with damage shield are, are pretty rough. Alright, that's good. We can ignore that for now. Ooh, this one does have an encamp bonus, which is a little scary. We could actually... Ah, I would... See, that was not smart of me. I, I should have saved one more ember. Yeah. This is getting pretty scary for our current setup. Well, we certainly can use Restoration Detonation. Do a lot of damage there. Uh, we probably would throw another Frostbite on the boss. And... He will live this turn. But we should really get some more units on the field. So our Pyro will probably be taking care of these. Yeah, they, he actually heals it all the way back, which is nice. All right, so now he is on the field, essentially. What can we do here? 
Uh, I think we want to do this, this, and this. And I'm just trying to buy time. Fortunately, that frostbite is doing really good work. Also, I will throw it back on normal just so you can see what that speed is actually like. So, Helical Crystals here is really nice. Uh, and we should be able to kill this on this floor. So when we get uh, a boss killed, uh, we get some extra rewards. This has a variable cost. Cycle of life, I like that one. This is another sweeping one. Yeah, so uh, we get these major enhancements. So we can give our Pyre plus 10 attack and plus 30 health. We give it plus 10 attack. Oh, we don't give us an Ember. Uh, every turn we get one more energy, or we get one more draw, or we get one more capacity on each floor. Uh, I typically go with the Ember first. I'm certainly no master at this, though. Uh, and as we get further down, sometimes you get some more choices. So we could do stuff like uh, duplicate a card. So let's say we wanted to duplicate... Uh, you know, I don't know if it copies the enhancements. Let's find out. It does. Yeah, how about that? Good to know. Uh, we can get a new unit. Another, a lot of sweep uh, cards we've got in here. We can remove some cards, so say we get rid of uh, maybe like a Frozen Lance and one of these Train Stewards. And then we can also upgrade our Champion at certain points. Uh, and there's different paths you can take depending on what it is. Like this one will just up it to 20 spikes and 60 health, or we can have a, a draw when hit. I'll we'll probably take that. But uh, yeah, I think that is a pretty good gauge, a short kind of view of how the game plays out. I, I've had a lot of fun with this so far. I think it's got that, you know, just one more kind of aspect of it. The runs are maybe, uh, I don't know if I would say an hour long, maybe like 40 minutes long if I was just playing on my own and uh, not trying to commentate over it. But uh, yeah, I think, I think the style is cool. I think the music is cool. Presentation is good. It's easy to pick up and play. There's some really cool features too. Um, let's see if I can get them real quick. You can, if I go to the logbook here, I can see things I've done. And there's actually a, somewhere in here, there's a run history. Um, where is it? Not that one. Let me go back to the main menu. Here it is, yeah, so if I go to run history, I can look at this one, and this will give me a summary of everything that I did during that run. Yeah, um, and on top of that, yeah, so we can also get a link that uh, you can link this to other people that have Monster Train, and it'll show them this summary in their game. You can also generate a challenge And I believe the way that works is it essentially takes the seed from my run and allows me to send it to others. So this one, you know, manually heroes trainer, I think. Um, if I just, if you type that in, perhaps maybe that's what it gives you. But yeah, I think it's really cool. I think there's a lot of features here. Uh, I don't know, you know, what the longevity is like. If you're into roguelikes, probably quite a bit. I can see myself putting quite a few hours into this. And uh, yeah, so again, if you're interested in it, it's on Steam, it's 25 bucks, it's 10% off if you don't slay the Spire. I think it's also 10% off on top of that for another couple of days. And thanks again to the developer of Poetry for giving me a code to check it out. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click like, helps a bunch. Subscribe for more. I'll see you soon.